so before starting this session i would like to uh, show you the uh, topics or the modules which will be covering today so the first topic what we will be covering is creating lower thirds next is creating adobe dynamic link third is animating shapes and the last one is syncing text with audio track so these are the four things which we will be covering it today and uh, let us start with the first one which is creating lower thirds so this lower third is basically which we put or which we uh, rather insert during our videos maybe suppose if uh, any character is there and if you want to have a brief introduction of this that what is the character about of or any kind of uh, scene which you want to add uh, make a represent it through text then you can add lower thirds also this will be applicable many a times we have seen that students are preparing their show reels maybe a vfx show reel or a 3d show reel or any kind of a graphic designing portfolio so the fonts which they use or the appearance or the placement of that uh, uh, the shape or the rectangle box which they are creating is not at the right uh, area so this going to be helpful for everyone so that we have a nice uh, understanding that where it should be exactly placed or how the animation should do so i'll quickly go to after effects or before that i would like to go to uh, premiere once as i've got so i hope you guys are able to see my after effects uh, window over here i'll go to premiere as i said so i'll go to premiere and i've got this three footage i'm not going to show you any sort of video editing over here but we would actually be placing uh, the composition directly from after effects so we have the three different footages which i've chosen So this is what uh, the three footages are what we are getting here and uh, I'll go to after effects here and then i'll quickly create a i'll create a new comp here so i'll go to file new or composition new composition and i'll name this is comp1 which rest of the settings remaining the same with felv 720 and i'll just hit ok and then i'll be importing my footage what i've got So I've got three footages here. So first I'll be uh, starting with this footage. This is just in case of importing a footage. That's it. It's a five second footage. And now I'll be creating a shape or rather a lower third through some shapes. So I'll go here, which is the rectangle tool. I'll click here. And uh, over here, uh, we get some parameters like fill and stroke. So inside stroke, I do not want any stroke, so I'll click here and I'll then say none, then hit OK. And inside my fill, uh, I need a fill option over here. So I'll take this uh, solid color maybe and uh, then uh, I will be creating this shape. Now as you can see, this is the shape what I have created. Now I would like to add some... Uh, animation to this so we will be animating this to our graph editor and inside this there is contents and rectangles so what i'll do is as i want the animation from my right area to the left area so i'll be adding a content here inside my content i'll click here and i'll say Or just I can insert my uh, contents, I can go to my rectangle over here 
inside my contents of the rectangle and not this transform we get one more transform here uh, for rectangle and if i click here on the position on the first frame and moving ahead maybe somewhere around 1.5 seconds i'll just add one more keyframe and going on the first frame i will be taking this to the right so for that i have to increase the value of my x axis on the position so it goes something like this and this is a very basic animation i want this to be very fast so now making this animation more realistic or more smooth what we need to do is we need to convert this frames so select this right click here go to keyframe assistant and then you have to click on easy ease so you get something like this i hope my uh, screen is visible to all Is my screen visible to all? Are you able to see the After Effects uh, panel over here? I'm able to see some questions uh, where you are not able to see my screen. So just uh, you can type. in the chat box if you are able to see my screen here so if you can see i have already animated this shape and selecting this i will be now going to the graph editor so i guess you are able to see my screen now now i will be selecting these and i'll be going to graph editor over here and I will select this, and I will actually make this uh, faster. And I want this animation out to be slower. So if I, if you see now, so my shape appears something like this. So I hope you are able to see my uh, screen now properly. Now, what the next thing what I'll do is I'll select this and I'll make this slightly linear, as I want a very smooth uh, kind of appearance or ease in of this strip. Now I'll be creating one more shape. So I'll go here. and i'll change its color to white and uh, somewhat like this i'm looking for so this would actually appear once this uh, i have to take a new layer for that as i had just created in that shape same shape layer so select outside and then go here and i'll just select something like this and inside this what i want is i'll again go to the contents of the shape layer and inside this there is transform rectangle again as we just did for the previous shape so inside position somewhere over here this uh, shape has also changed to red as we had initially changed its color so just uh, make this red and this shape layer over here i would like to take this beneath of this Maybe above, and uh, expand this inside my position over here. 
so here on this frame i want this uh, on the position somewhere over here and on the first frame over here i want something like this now if we play both so this so what i want basically is we have to offset this layer in timing so i'll go here and now if i play this but still it, the animation is not looking smooth so we have to make this smooth so select this you can either right click keyframe assistant or uh, then easy ease or else you can hit shortcut which is f9 which i uh, prefer that so selecting both again i'll go to graph editor over here and i'll just make this uh, something like this slightly offset the time over here now over here what i'll do is i'll enable the motion blur so if you can see this is the motion blur option and this has to be also activated from here as well otherwise it will not uh, give the effect of motion blur or rather it will not enable the motion blur so we get something like this and then just we can type a random text over here so just uh, the size is too big so i'll just decrease this down also i'll be duplicating this i'll hit down uh, maybe or i can actually press p for position i'll be taking this down over here and i'll be actually decreasing the size and we can have a sub text here so this will be appearing once my shape has entered the frame and for this what i'll be doing is this main text over here so the fonts which i have chosen is go bold and even the uh, sub font here is again go bold if i want i can change this to maybe champion and luminous regular here something like that you can just uh, change the font many a times we have seen in students who say that you are they are using fonts if, like if they are showing a vfx footage then they are writing original fonts and uh, original footage or something like that and the font which they are choosing is something as times new roman or maybe comic sans ms so that is not a professional way what i would suggest here is you can uh, go for a sans serif font so again fonts here play a very huge role now what i want is uh, i will be masking this text so for masking what i'll be doing is basically i want this text that it should be actually appearing from this shape over here from this white shape over here so for that what i'll be doing is i'll go to main text over here inside that there is an option which says animate so if you can see if you expand the text there is an option which says animate so i just animate click on animate here and there is an option which says position so over here on this position over here i'll insert a keyframe hit down u to just see the animated uh, parameters what you have set so i'll set here one and somewhere again over here and going back to this frame keyframe over here i'll take this to the left sorry this was the sub text here or i just fix for now i'll just collapse this i would like to go to my main text over here 
animate position i just turn off this for now as i'm only working on the main text over here so inside my position i'll add a keyframe and i'll take this to the left yeah somewhere over here and now if i play this there is a slow animation so i'll make this fast Select this F9 and I'll go to the graph editor again and this I will be making this uh, the appearance of this would be slow and the initial animate in would be very fast. It's the same graph editor as we do in Maya. So we are actually uh, ma manipulating the tangents over here. Now, in order to do this, uh, the next thing what we'll do is uh, on this frame, it's actually looking out of this. So, as I said, we'll mask this. So, we'll actually create a mask over here. And I'll select this uh, rectangle tool over here. Make sure you have selected this main text. And I'll now draw a mask. So, it will be only showing the area which is there in my mask. And it will not be showing the area um, before this. So, yeah, somewhat like this. The reason why I had taken uh, or added animation over here inside position was if I would have actually gone to the transform and then if I would have taken this position then it would actually uh, move the entire position of the text, the entire placement of the text which also includes the mask. So my mask is static now, there is no movement in my mask and I have just added another animator or the animate object over here which on the position, that's the reason I had taken that. Now if I go here, so we get something like this. Now this subtext you can just uh, maybe you can just add a scale over here or maybe just an opacity over here. So I'll hit down T for opacity, which is the shortcut. So I hope my audio is lost, I guess. Are you are you guys able to hear my audio? So are you guys able to hear now? So I'll just add a opacity over here and uh, add a keyframe and over here I'll make this to zero. Just a basic thing as I do not want to waste uh, more time on this as I've already shown you uh, this one. And now the next thing what I'll do is if you want you can also add a gradient kind of uh, a gradient ramp on this shape here if you want. So I'll just uh, quickly add a gradient ramp over here just for some variation. So I'll just go and quickly type in gradient ramp on this shape and uh, make this to red and a darker version of red and I'll be controlling this through this uh, two areas over here so it actually creates a nice look of this so now this is what we have created and uh, 
also we have added the animation now what i would the next thing what i like to do is we'll be actually creating a dynamic link which is the second part of our module today so just control s in order to save this now the next thing what i'll do is i'll first turn off this as i do not want this and i only want this lower third what i've created into my preview or adobe premiere pro so earlier what used to happen is we actually used to render this out from uh, after effects maybe in a png sequence or a jpeg sequence or tiff targa whatever and then we used to actually uh, import that entire sequence into premiere so which actually used to take time or uh, used to actually uh, used to take a lot of time while rendering plus also it also used to uh, make the entire process very big so what adobe if you are using adobe cc version so what adobe has done is there is something known as dynamic link so it actually enables the user to entirely import the after effects composition what you have created directly into premiere so that's basically a very nice thing what adobe has integrated and you do not need to render it out and also there is no question of quality loss or compression as uh, premiere is actually calling the after effects entire composition file and there is no uh, quality loss or no time of render is also being wasted on that so i'll go to now, now go to premiere and over here as you can see we had this footage so i'll be placing this so how to do that so i hope you are able to see my uh, window now for premiere so i'll go to my project panel over here i'll hit down control i to import and uh, i'll select that composition what i had created so this is the composition what we had created in after effects select this click then hit open over here and it will actually create that dynamic link automatically and this dialog box will be appearing which says import after effects composition and inside that you can select this comp as my after effects comp or also uh, known as comp1 or named as comp1 as i did not rename that so hit okay so if you see uh, this uh, composition over here if i double click over here on my source monitor i'll be able to see this if i go to the first frame over here so this has been actually been done in after effects so i just uh, hit down o over here and i just drag the video from here as there is no audio and now if we see if i maximize this window so this says comp1 underscore or comp1 slash lower third so that was the name of my file lower third dot aep which was the after effects project which we had created and this comp1 is the composition name so now if you see this this is the main text or the composition what we had created in after effects so i hope you guys are now able to understand that there is no need of rendering from after effects we can just do this by creating this and we also learned how to animate using the graph editor now this is the second video so i'll go back uh, to my after effects here we have successfully completed this uh, the first footage over here and i'll go to after effects and go to my project i'll be creating a comp2 and there i'll be importing this footage just for my reference and now i'll be creating a shape again a rectangle over here where i do not want any sort of fill so just click on the fill over here and we get this dialog box select none and hit okay now inside this stroke yes of course i want stroke so i'll be selecting this color maybe white 
and uh, I'll get something like this. I can reduce down the stroke from here 10 or maybe 8. Yeah, this looks fine. Now what I will do is, I will be animating this, the stroke of this. So for that, what you have to do is you have to go to contents, go to add, you will see an option which is trim path. Now this is also applicable. There are uh, various students who are also creating some kind of short films or some kind of projects which they are creating. They can always integrate this option. So inside my trim path, there are two options which is start and end. So I'll be adding keys on both the parameters over here. And then going here, I'll just go here and I'll again add a key. So I'll go to the first frame over here and inside my end over here. It will be something like this. And now if I see, I'm getting something like this. Now what I want is, I want this animation not to begin from this point but to begin from this point so for that i have to actually offset this so there is an option which says offset over here so i just offset this from here as i want this animation to be start from this point so now if i play i get something like this also over here the animation looks pretty unnatural to me and i just Select this, all the endpoints, F9. Now, what I want is, it should start fast and end slow. So, selecting this, I'll go to the graph editor over here. You can hit down plus for zooming in. And uh, select this point over here and this point, make this smooth so that it starts fast and end smooth. Yeah, something like this. Now again, what I want is it actually shouldn't complete the entire rectangle over here. So I want some area of this to be something like this. So if you see the end point value over here, it's 67.6. .6. So when it goes up till here, it is actually 100. So Go to your last frame over here and I'll make this as 68 and it will end up till here and now if you see the animation over here, it ends on 68. Also if I want I can now, if I want to offset this so I can also offset this some, somewhat like this and I can always increase the end values for this. And then you can always have your text here inside this. So I'll just randomly type a text, enter text here, or maybe this can be a subtext. And then I'll be again creating a new text, main text. I like to make this maybe I'll take a font which is known as lemon milk. Bold. Increase the size over here. Set this up. Make sure you are aligning it, aligning it pretty well. And change its color. So this text is here. Now what you can do is you can you have to animate this. So in the same way as we had done for uh, the masking part over here, you can on this as we turn from left to right, you can do here from maybe right to left or maybe up to down. So just uh, select this. 
if you want you can also add some layer styles so right click here go to layer style and you can add an outer flow kind of thing so your text is actually highlighted and this sub text over here can be turn, uh, changed to black So this main text over here will just uh, animate on the position or also I can do it on scale. If I do it on scale, if I select this, go to the first frame over here, if I hit down 0, I get something like this. So if you are not interested to scale, you can always uh, add position as I just did earlier. So it will appear from top to bottom. So now we will be animating on the y axis and not the x axis. Also, if you want, you can turn on the motion blur over here for the text. Now, if I do this, so it comes with a bang. So, if you see this, it actually this uh, shape over here. If I zoom it here, graph editor is very important. So, if I zoom in, it actually starts slow and ends fast. So, if I play this, it ends something like this. Now over here, I will be masking this up. So this is what you can create and this again on shape layer over here, you can add opacity. So there are different forms or just different ways what you can try out. Sorry, I did on the shape layer of the opacity, I should have done on the subtext here. Now suppose if this is also done now, next thing what you can do is you can Again, import this in After Effects or sorry, you can import this in uh, Adobe Premiere. So there is no such restriction on different footages, how many times you would like to create. So it will give, enable you to create that. So again, I'll go to my, uh, After uh, Premiere over here and I just turn off this video as I do not want that. So. Going back to Premiere, again I will be duplicating or again I will be actually repeating that step, Control i for importing that. So over here the file remains the same, which was lower third. Just the composition over here has changed and we have renamed that to Composition 2. So open, now it will give you two options. Earlier it was giving us Comp 1 and Comp 2, now it is giving us two options. So select this Comp 2 and hit OK. Again, it's asking for confirmation. Again, hit OK, and your COM2 has been actually inserted over here. We'll just drag and drop this. Hit down O, I'm taking only the video part. If I just uh, drag this as it is around 10 seconds.
so this is how it looks it's uh, videos i'm sure it's uh, actually lagging as it is not being maybe uh, real time but uh, this is how actually it's looking so this is how you can uh, create your load thoughts and uh, again over here if you want to create one more load thread over here so you can just uh, import this in the same way so i'll create a new comp over here com3 and i'll just import this footage and i'll be creating a new shape over here maybe a different kind of uh, actually uh, load that i want to create so maybe this or I'll increase the stroke size to maybe 30 over here I guess I have to increase this more. So this is the anchor point. I would like to place this in the middle and over here what I would like to show you is I want uh, animation of the entire load but that is what we also see in many YouTube channels or maybe on the YouTube videos or some music videos so you can just create this shape what I have created over here with uh, stroke size being 102 and on it a text would appear so I just control D over here which means duplicate I'll take the position over here again I'll set a control D third copy of this position somewhere over here or before that uh, I'll just delete this once and uh, I'll just add I'll just uh, I've put these three shapes over here so first I would like uh, I would like to animate shape number two over here. So I'll go here, shape two, add trim paths, trim paths here, end value over here, and again click a, add a keyframe over here. So inside this. Again selecting both the keyframes over here, hit down F9, so if you see we get this, now add some life to this animation. So how you can add life, so you can add life by going to graph editor. So this I want to be fast and the animate out over here to be slow. So I get something like this. So if you see here, it's actually animating fast and animate out here is slow. In the same way, we have got this shape layer 1 and shape layer 3. So this shape layer, we, I'll be holding down my R which means rotate, I'll be rotating this. And I actually get something like this. Also in shape layer of, of uh, position, I will actually be going somewhere over here. And inside my shape 3 over here, or rather shape 1, hit down P for position. So I get something like this. Now this shape, uh, I'll rename this. Uh, this shape layer can be mid as it's in middle. This shape layer can be up. And this shape layer can be down. 
So this mid, I would actually like to change its color, give a darker tone over here. So if you see, this is how it looks. And this animation has been done. So I'll go to mid again over here, expand this, add trim paths, trim paths again over here. Then on start and end. So once this animation is complete, then this animation would start. So now what is happening is actually the reverse thing. I do not want this to be started from above. I want this to be started from the end. So what we'll do is I'll go to the last frame. which is 100 over here and this I will be taking it right up here and then I will be offsetting this. So what is happening actually is on, on my start frames over here it is 100. If I go here So now if I play this, what I've done is uh, on end the value I've taken this to 100 and on my start it starts with 100 so my start and end both starts with 100 actually and the start position over here ends at 0. So then I'm able to get this kind of animation over here. Yeah, so this is what, what exactly I was looking for. So we do not have any parameters or any animation on the end value over here as it is 100 and this, then this, and then this shape would actually appear. So I hope you guys are able to see my screen over here. I just maximize this as I'm getting some comments that you're not able to see the animation. I've maximized this view. One, two. So we have not done with the third one, so we'll be animating this. Now the up one over here, again the same thing has to be done, add trim path, you can actually animate the values from here or just I will show you one more time, add trim paths, go to your trim paths over here, start and end, so once your animation for this ends somewhere over here. This end can be actually be taken up till zero and again this has to be given a life so I've just disabled the start as there is no uh, need of 
adding animation to the start one as I have only animated on end. So select both these F9, easy ease, graph editor. Now what I want here is I want this to be added slow and end fast. So select these both and then make this slow and now I play. So it ends pretty fast. Now suppose if even you want to slow this that ending should also be smooth. So you can do go somewhere like over here. And now if you see Now this animation has been done. Now what the next thing I will do is enable motion blur on all these strips over here and make sure your enable is enable motion blur for the main comp is on. Now if I animate this, I get something like this. Now again some text can be added over here. Now before that I would like to uh, add gradient to this, so gradient ramp on all the shapes. And this text size to be increased, color to be changed. Also, I would change its font. Control D here, or else I'll just scale this up as the animation. What I want here is for the scale. Again over here I'll go and I'll make this faster F9 motion blur over here so in my up I'll just copy this and also in my down, I'll just paste this. Now this is looking naturally odd. So inside this, I do not want a gradient. So I'll uh, go or add a fill over here, a darker version. Fill would be somewhere on my mid and uh, I'll just take this eyedropper tool, select this and I'll make a darker version of this. Yeah, and then I duplicate this text layer, enter text here, and I'll take this down, subtext here. Again, I'll offset this a bit. So, right now, if I see, I'm not wasting more time on the text animation as I wanted you to show a different type of lower third. Now, I'll be turning on the video over here and uh, I'll be taking rather an adjustment layer. So right click new adjustment layer and I'll turn off the video now. 
and then I'll go to transform over here as I would like to scale this down a bit the entire thing the entire uh, <clears throat> shape what we have created so hit down transform I'll scale this down a bit and uh, I will also change its position And I will actually, there is an option which says Q. So I would like to increase this Q somewhere over here. Just a different kind of uh, experiment which I would like to do. So it will also act on the footage over here. So that's the reason I had turned on the footage, turn off the footage. And now my comp is ready to go to Premiere. So let me go back to Premiere and this is my comp 3. And inside this, I'll be just uh, again Control I, lower third, open, comp 3. Okay, again at last, COM3, okay, and then I'll be importing, double click here, and I'm able to get this, so I, yeah, that's all, so I'll go here, and now if I play this, I get something like this, so if you see the entire video over here, I'll just maximize this for you guys, Play the last one again. So this is what we are actually getting. So this is how you can import your After Effects composition by creating this dynamic link. So this dynamic link is automatically created in uh, Premiere when you are actually importing your After Effects composition. So there is actually no need of uh, rendering this file as I said earlier. And one more thing which has to be kept in mind is uh, your After Effects window over here has to be kept on. So if your After Effects window is not on then there might be chances. Yeah, so then there might be chances that uh, your uh, 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 composition may not call it or it might show as offline. So while you are working on Premiere or while you are importing this kind of composition make sure your After Effects is turned on. So we have uh, completed two of our topics over here. So if we see we have created uh, lower thirds and we have also created <coughs> the Adobe dynamic link. So we'll be moving on to our third topic which is animating shapes. So we'll be creating some shapes and we'll be adding some animation to it in After Effects only. So I'll show you my After Effects window over here. Just save this as shapes. Save. I'll take a new composition control and shortcut. 1280, 720 is the frame size what I'm looking for and the duration can be one and then I'll be just hitting down OK. Now what I'll be doing here is I'll be first uh, creating a circle over here or an ellipse and inside which I would like to take the stroke as white and this can be maybe around 10 the stroke width over here on the stroke size holding down shift I will just create the shape And also create a background over here 
I'll name this as BG and take this down and then I'll go to my effects over here, gradient ramp. So these are the two points what you can always uh, change to. Yeah, so this is what I'm actually looking for and this is the shape there what I've got. Now what I want is, I will be increasing the stroke size and I want this to be appeared from its animation. So on the first frame over here, I'll add a keyframe on the stroke width. Moving down to maybe around 1.5 seconds and be selecting this I am able to see a question which says that uh, is there any expression for this uh, animation? So, so it's by Surya Jyoti Kumar Renu, uh, which says, uh, is there any expression for this animation? So the animation which I had shown you earlier it was uh, for animation uh, which was for basically for the position part where we had actually offset on either on x axis or y axis so that's a very basic animation and we have just done that through graph editor yeah but for using graph editor or if you want to make some changes i do not think that there is it can be done through uh, the scripting part for actually manipulating the tangents of your graph editor regarding the animation uh, using expression we'll be seeing that right in this video or this module So uh, there are uh, many questions which has been asked. So we'll having we'll be having a round of this question answers at the end of my session. So this is what I'll go to the first frame over here and I'll increase the stroke size and take this to maximum. So with the currently, if you see my screen, the stroke width is triple one six. So now if I see this. Yes, I get something like this and over here on stroke width, I'll write to decrease to zero. So I'll select this, hit F9. So I get some uh, smooth animation like this. If you had not made this too easy, the animation would look something like this, a very static animation. So this easy is basically to make your animation smoother. Now this is the graph editor. So it appears slowly and it ends fast. The reverse if you want to do, select this. It appears fast and ends slow. Yeah, so this looks fine to me. Now, I'll be holding down Control S, I'll just save this file. If I play this, I get something like this. Now over here, when this animation ends, I will take my CTI, which is the current time indicator, over here. And uh, then I will rename this to circle underscore intro. And then what I will be doing is, I will be taking actually a pen tool, as I do not want to take a shape. But yes, through this pen tool, we will be creating a circle. So I've just turned this off for the moment and stroke maybe I'll name this to maybe 12 and uh, just click here, click here, that's it. So then you, you are able to see this anchor point, I'll also lock this BG, also lock this circle intro and go to shape layer 1. So if you see here, currently your anchor point is here, so make sure you're holding down Y and you're coming, at, you're coming up here. And 
this over here has to be expanded as what I'll be doing next is I'll be actually uh, expanding this and as you can see there is an option which says contents as we have already seen earlier and we had done trim path over here earlier so here if I click on add if you are able to see my screen there is an option which says repeater so I'll be actually adding a repeater over here so I've added repeater and again I'll be expanding this and inside my repeater you are able to see copies which is 3 so basically this repeater creates multiple copies of your uh, shape and uh, I'll be increasing this down or increasing this up rather to maybe 12 so it has created multiple 12 copies of this uh, repeater and inside that you get one more transform which is the transform repeater so this is not of the content shape or the transform shape so basically in this shape you are actually getting three transforms so that is very much important to know which transform has to be animated at which moment. So inside this, there is a content which says transform shape one and inside my repeater, again, I'm getting an attribute or a parameter which is transform repeater. And beneath that, there is one more transform. So this transform is for the entire shape. This is for the universal shape. Now this transform is for the repeater which you, you had created by going to add and selecting the repeater over here now going to transform repeater over here there is an anchor point which is 0 and 0 and position is 100 and 0 so what has to be done here is as you can see the position on x axis is 100 so I do not want that I want this entire 12 copies what I have created that should be on the entire single position the entire position for all these repeaters should be on the same position so I'll select this, I'll hit 0, enter. So if you see, the entire 12 copies over here has now been a single area or a single space. If I offset this, nothing will happen. If suppose if it was 100, just to show you the difference. So if I offset this, so it actually gets offset over here. So I'll take this down to 100 or sorry to 0 on my position over here and uh, next thing what I'll do is inside my transform repeater make sure you are inside your transform repeater and making these changes and you are not actually changing the parameters of your universal transform which is a property of your default shape. So I'll go to the rotation of my transform repeater over here and I'll add a keyframe over here or I'll just control Z as I have to add a script. As someone was asking uh, that is there any expression so yes there is a basic expression where I can turn this or convert this entire stroke that I've created to search circle so hit down alt from your keyboard and you can click from your left mouse button on your rotation key so if you see it actually turns into red and it actually gives you the option of adding expression so I'll be adding an expression which will be as it is a rotation I want this to be rotated in uh, as a circle uh, shape as this is just a single stroke or a single line what I have created. So I will be just uh, typing in an expression which will be 360 which means that the degrees will be 360 divided by 12. So the reason why I am adding 12 here is because there are 12 number of copies. If suppose if it was 14 or 15 then we could have we should have added 14 or 15. And once you are done, I'll add nothing to it. I'll just click outside over here. So if you see those 12 copies, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 has been generated over here. And we are actually getting a circle kind of shape. Now this circle is looking like a, uh, not looking exactly like a circle as it is slightly offset. So what has to be done here is you have to actually offset or you have to change the values of your anchor point inside your transform repeater. So doing this, yeah. So earlier it was 0, I just changed this to minus 15 over here. I'll just show you, if it was 0 earlier, I have changed this to minus 15. Now this value is what I have entered is should not be, if I am telling 15, so 15 is not 
और माइनस फिफ्टीन बोला तो माइनस फिफ्टीन ही होना चाहिए इट कम्प्लीटली डिपेंड ऑन द शेप वॉट यू क्रिएटेड सो यू टू ऑलवेज चेंज दिस बाई चेंजिंग द वैल्यू फ्रॉम योर माउस बाई प्रेसिंग लेफ्ट क्लिक एंड मूव इट टू राइट और लेफ्ट सो दिस इज वॉट आई क्रिएटेड योर एंड इफ आई नाउ इंक्रीज द स्केल दिस विल एक्चुअली मेक माई शेप लुक बैड If I increase the scale from here, it actually increases the entire shape for all these uh, copies. Now, what is to be done here is, if I go to my path here, or if I go to my stroke, if I go to my transform shape over here, if I increase the scale, it is actually increasing the scale from here as well. now there is no animation to it so of course we have to do animation as well so if you offset this it will act something like this which will not look good if i increase the y it creates the distance in between all these uh, repeaters over here y means the anchor point to y axis of my repeater over here and position the so position of my Entire thing over here. This transform shape. I'll take this slightly up. Yeah. Now what is to be done is I'm completely satisfied by the shape what I've created. Now I want animation. So go here, add, then trim parts. So I'll add a keyframe both on start and end. Again on start and end. So over here, I'll take this to zero. Now if I play this, it becomes something like this. Now also on my start point over here, I will be actually ending this animation. So as I want to uh, animate this out, so I'll be increasing the start value to zero on my end frame. Now if I see there is no movement. so what has to be done is this both keyframes has to be selected and this has to be slightly offset so now if you see it acts something like this now again to me there is no life to animation so for adding life life as i just said you have to make this to easy end by pressing f9 so this looks pretty smooth now if you want to again go to your graph editor select this on end if you see this this appears like this so that's the actually the power of graph editor I'll just maximize my view so that you can get a nice view of my animation. So I'm playing this frame by frame.
So this is what we are getting. Now this placement would be done over here when my shape one is uh, circle intro over what I had created is actually ending. Let's turn off this. So this is what we are getting. I'll just enable the motion blur. So this is actually looking pretty nice. And uh, go to my graph editor over here. The shape one. I name this as burst. So this kind of animation you can easily create. So we have done that to our text over here. Now, uh, one more thing which I wanted to show here is inside my this burst over here. If I expand the contents over here, if I go to my shape one, if I go to my stroke, there is an option which says line cap, butt cap. So butt cap is basically the capping of this shape over here. So currently you see this is very linear. So if I change this to round cap, it becomes something like this. So if you see the end points or the start points of my shape here, it actually converts this to round cap. And again, projecting cap are pretty much linear just as butt cap. So I would like to change this to round cap. So these are some kind of animations which you can do. Another <coughs> type of animation which I would like to show you is I'll be creating a circle over here. Uh, 12 is currently present, so that's fine. So over here, uh, I'll go to my ellipse stroke over here. And the stroke width is currently 12, so I'll increase, decrease this down to maybe 0. So it would add something like this and also it would start from 0. So it's actually taking birth from 0 to 12 then again it's dying. So this is actually can add, can be added as small particles. All over your screen. And also we can add some uh, transform to this on the scale part. Now also if you want to can add some dashes to it. So I've just clicked here on my dashes so it has become something like this. The shape for dashes here is actually not looking good. So just delete this. Select this F9 to make this smooth. I'll just uh, press U to see the animated properties for this and I'll just go here and make this to maybe 90. Or if I delete this. This is actually looking nice. Also on this, I would like to make this as F9. Now this shape over here can be always duplicated. So make multiple copies for this. This can be actually offset. And you can place it many a times you want. And when this uh, actually <clears throat> shape goes off, then you can always have a text here.
increase its size. Scale. Zero. Enable motion blur over here. And down F9. Graph editor. If you want to make this more smooth. So this is how you can create some nice kind of introduction maybe for your videos or any content which you are creating at the time of uh, maybe just a mode can be either a story or it can be some kind of motion graphics or a video project what you are actually making or your students are making. So I hope you guys are able to understand this as well. So now moving on to the last topic, what we have is uh, syncing text with audio track. I'll go file new project and first save this file, name this as audio and over here again I'll take a new composition with 1280, 720 and uh, duration can be slightly quick, maybe 1 minute and uh, 0 or maybe 20 seconds. So what basically we will be doing is we will be actually creating a text and that text will be animated as per the audio track what you have in After Effects. So we will be creating a text first and then we will be importing the audio and that audio will actually react through or that text will actually react through the audio. So I just uh, take the type tool over here or the shortcut is control T which I generally prefer. I'll take a font, uh, I'll just uh, check the fonts that I have got here. I'm actually looking for a fat kind of font. Okay, let me take this uh, lemon milk bold and I'll be increasing the tracking of this font and also the size. So I'll take this somewhere over here and I'll increase the tracking. So the next thing what I'll do is I have this I'll first duplicate Control D and uh, I'll right click this or before that I'll be importing a sound file over here. Or just let me see if I have yeah I'm actually looking for this font which is Go Bold and now I'll be importing a sound file. So I also have a sound file over here or rather an audio file. So I've just imported that in After Effects and 
if I drag and take this down up here, this is actually shows me the waveform over here. So we'll be actually linking this with the waveform of our text. So just confirm me on the chat box if you are able to listen this sound or the audio track over here. For this you also have to clear your cache so go to edit purge all memory and disk cache so i approximately have around 1.5 gb from my disk cache because it is actually running real time i'll just offset this So just can I see some answers on the chat box if you are able to uh, listen the sounds of the audio track. Great, great, great. So I'll move ahead as audio is actually playing a good role or a major role here that's why that's the reason I had asked you guys so what I'll be doing is I'll be selecting this I've already duplicated this and I'll name this as track or maybe sound underscore track just reading the sound layer it starts something like this Select your layer over here as your guys are able to hear the sound. So right click here on your layer, the text layer what you have and then you have to go to create and there is an option which says create mask from text. So select this mask, select that option and if you see your text has been entirely converted to the mask shapes. I have zoomed in so that you guys can see this. So this has been completely converted to the mask shape what we have got. Now what you have to do is a very simple thing. You have to go to your FX panel over here. So there is an option which is known as audio spectrum, sorry. A U D I O audio spectrum which is spectrum inside generator. So just drag and drop. So now if you see the entire thing has been removed and only this portion of your alphabet is visible. So that's completely fine. So inside that audio spectrum you get many attributes which you have to tweak. So for the first one is audio layer which is very important and it says the source. So go to source and select masks. So it will actually be selecting the mask from this shape what we have created so we have actually converted the text to masks and inside that this there is an option which says path so select this there are you get you are now able to see different kind of mask a r e and a so go here select a so this is what you get And inside this maximum height is 480, you can increase this to maybe 1800. And uh, there is an option which says U interpolation. So if you increase this or if you rotate this, you get a nice U kind of thing which present with all the colors present. So you will get a very nice gradient kind of look over here. Now if you play this.
it is not reacting to the audio what we have inserted because the reason is the source here has to be masked what we have already selected but our uh, shape is actually not animating as per the original soundtrack or the soundtrack what we have got because the reason is you have to go here on your um, this layer I'll name this as big underscore a which is the big a go over here and inside this audio layer it has to be the track has to be chosen so select this if you see there is an option which says soundtrack so select that so now if you see you are able to get some variations in, inside your shape now if I click this so this is actually reacting with our audio waveform what we have got Now, if you think that your uh, frequency or ma maximum height is huge, then you can decrease this down to maybe 1400. Start frequency can maybe 30. So, it will be starting with the frequencies of 30. Also on U interpolation, if you would like to change, then you can always change this. Now the next thing what has to be done here is as you can see we have only just chosen one layer still this small a r e n a the letters what we have got the letters what we have got are uh, has to be animated as per our soundtrack So what has to be done is I'll just select this control D and I'll name this as small underscore A. Now inside that come to your path option over here. Select this and then select this. So if you see here you are also getting this shape. So now if you play both of your shapes or your mask are being animated. In the same way what has to be done is I will just uh, duplicate this then now we will be forming for R which is our next letter. So go here R big R control D enter small R. So I hope you are able to understand this. I am also trying to sync the shapes or the appearance of the shapes over here with my music. Again, I will duplicate this. I will form an E. So, I will go to my path. E. E is done. Again, control D, N, select N, so my N is also formed here. Now the last one which is left is A, big A, 
big a last as there are two big a's so again go to your path select a small a last and now if i do this So we have got all the alphabets now. Let us make some uh, tweakings on the colors or maybe on the view interpolation. Just randomly, I'm just selecting some colors. It actually requires a lot of RAM, so always make sure you are making purge, edit purge, and so if you see here, uh, last we had cleared our cache, which was 1.5 GB. So as we are now working on video, it has been calculated or accumulated to 16.8 GB. So hit down OK for a smoother performance of your system. Frequency band over here are 64. If I make this down to 50, it will actually decrease this. So, for all, we can just uh, make this down to 50, or if you want any changes, you can just do that. So, these can be actually implemented when you are making any sort of video or a kind of for a promotion or maybe a a motion graphic video can be also added when students are actually going to show for the sync or the synchronization between an audio uh, for, with the uh, text. So, our animation uh, or rather this uh, linking of alphabets with our shape has been done. Now, if I play this. Or rather, before playing this, what I would like to do is I would like to add a adjustment layer for a glow. So I'll go to New Adjustment Layer. So it will be applied on all my layers. Yeah, that's completely fine. Now again, I'll be going to my project panel over here and I'll be creating a new form which I'll like this as main. Hit Enter and I'll be taking this form one over here and. Uh, I'll be actually creating a background as I prefer a ramp always, radiant ramp. Make this as radial swap colors. This I would add. of course I'm looking for something very dark. This should control S. And now if I go here, I will be again taking a white solid. I'll be actually generating a grid. So GRID grid. So a grid has been created over here. So if you want, you can always type this something bigger you want or how small you want. So I'm looking for something like this. And the opacity is there. So I'll just... Uh, decrease down the opacity also from here I hit down T and then decrease the opacity and now if I play this
So I would like to decrease this uh, maximum height if I decrease this down to maybe uh, maybe uh, 5 or maybe 600. Nice play. Yeah, it's fine, no problem in that. So if I go to R over here, it's currently 1400. Let me take this to maybe 1000. Also on big R over here, I'll just go in maximum height 1000 as it is actually obstructing the shape. Now if I go to my main com, yeah, now it's looking fine. Now the reason it is ending here is because uh, audio track may, or maybe or maybe there are no layers over here, so it has to be extended. I just check once. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. I hope uh, you guys like this. So we will just uh, be starting with the question answers round if you have. So guys, any questions? Yeah, so I've got a very interesting question from Mr. Ramakant Tiwari which says a difference between shape layers and solid layers. So uh, basically solid layers are something which is actually acting as a flat uh, a solid color or basically a flat uh, kind of color which it gives so uh, we can like right click new and solid so this is what uh, a solid appears but if you are taking a shape so this is the shape layer so these are the shape layers what we have but like rectangle tool rounded rectangle tool ellipse etc so i hope i have answered your question Next is shape layers are vector based. Yeah, these all are vector based as it has been completely created in uh, your After Effects only. So, uh, do we have any other questions from anyone? Okay, I don't think so that we are having any more questions. The questions what I had, uh, what we had received, have answered everyone, I hope. So, just we'll wrap up. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time. Thank you.